I kind of make my slides very clicky. So it's like, I'm just going to sit there and click click on myself. Um, so like, this is me standing. And that part is that. So, <clears throat> it's, I'm so excited because like, I've been, oh, so I've, I read some papers from um, work they did in the dry woodlands in Spain. And they were looking at like plant facilitation and mutualism and that same water dynamic. And I was like, how am I going to start like unpicking like these plant interactions and thicket? There's just so many species. It's like, it's crazy. There's like all this stuff happening. Oh. Um, <laughs> so I was like, let me, let me start somewhere. So I wanted to look at plant association networks in the thicket. Um, because if I can find who's hanging out with who, maybe then we can start seeing why they're hanging out together. So, my uh, talk is titled Plant Interactions and Degraded Succulent Thicket, but I go from intact to moderately degraded to, 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 moderately degraded to severely degraded. And I look at where our friends went, because as you know, severely degraded thicket, there's very few friends out there. So, Plant association net what what's. So basically, um, a plant association network is a way of looking at how frequently or like what are the trends in plants that co occur. Um, so you can create a network and then it's like who is fundamental to that network, who's holding it together, and who are just like, you know, those friends that like, I don't know, pop around once in a while but aren't too important. Um, and this can kind of tell us who is helping who, who's just like there, and who's competing with who, and who's trying to like push each other out. So it's been done in quite a few semi-arid systems. Like, oh, there's this beautiful paper where they did like a global analysis using plot data, and then looking at like global trends and how plants how plants are interacting in um, semi-arid systems, looking at the roles of facilitation, competition, and mutualism. So th it does seem to be quite a, a common occurrence in arid and semi-arid systems. And that could be great to know in cycle and thicket because we still, as we, as we just saw, like we're still trying to figure out like what are the processes that maintain such a productive and biodiverse system under such harsh, trashy conditions. So this is a preliminary data set. Um, uh, all those points are photographs where I basically just walk around in the intact ticket, try to do as many plots as possible, and then use that, the number of plots I could do in the, that day to determine how many plots I'll do in the Moderately degraded thicket. It looks very bad from this image, but in that moderately degraded thicket, there's still quite a strong speckworm element. There's still relatively large bush clumps, um, and then you can see in the severely degraded thicket, there's not much of anything. So at each spot, I would um, where'd my there's like a, a it's supposed to be a pole somewhere there. Um, so I'd go in, I'd place a pole in a bush clump, and any plant that occurred within a half a meter by half a meter little blocky, from ground level all the way up to the canopy, I'd document. Um, so I did about 30 of those in each of the degradation states or thicket states. So let's see what we found. In intact succulent thicket, that's not the right number. <laughs> okay, no, it is. Um, <laughs> so I found 40 species across the 30 plots. So quite a high number of species, considering the plots are basically like the size of this piece of paper. Um, and there are 64 pairs that occurred in more than three of the plots. So I just filtered it out. Anything that was like a once off or like twice, it was like maybe they're just there. Um, so I wanted to see which associations were like quite frequent. 
and also to make the network a little bit more uh, visually palatable. So then when I plotted that, I found, of course, quite a, you know, it's not the easiest thing to interpret straight off, but the thickness of the lines are scaled to the frequency of co-current. So we can see here, spectrum, lots of lines, very thick lines. Like, so there's a lot of species that are repeatedly occurring with and underneath the spectrum canopy. So then broke that down to growth form, uh, kept spectrum as its own thing. Um, and then again, spectrum is like associated with all these different growth forms. So I'm going to go through this relatively quickly and I'm going to compare like all the networks across the different degradation states. So in Morley just grab the ticket, only 29 species. So we just lost 11 species. So there's clearly like quite a rapid loss of biodiversity and degradation happens. And this is the moderately degraded space is like there's still a lot of recruitment. It still has like a lot of ecological processes happening, the spectrum's coming back. But there's all these other species that are kind of missing. Number of associations dropped down to 38. So the community processes are falling apart a little bit. We're losing friends. But then when you look at the network, again, Spectrum has a lot of associations. It's still pretty uh, fundamental to the network. Growth form, very similar to intact thicket. And we go to severely degraded, 32 species. So pretty much the same number of species as in moderately degraded thicket. Because now you're getting all these little crow things coming through and filling up space and becoming part of the, the community. Plant associations, again, 37. Very similar to moderately degraded. So there's a rapid change that then kind of holds on. But then the network, totally different. There's no spectrum. So who becomes the anchor? Um, then you've got some Greer Robusta holding, holding space, a lot of friends there, but um, a much more simplified network and a lot, like quite a, a lot fewer co-occurrences or like associations. And then looking at that in the plant functional type, the woody shrubs become, start filling the role of spectrum in these uh, severely degraded thicket bush clumps. So. Where did our friends go? Species, there's a clear loss um, in species as degradation happens, but then it kind of balances out from moderate and severely degraded. <coughs> so looking at the differences in associations across the three, spectrum, really important in intact thicket. Still really important in moderately degraded thicket, but Relatively insignificant, it's not there in severely degraded systems. So, like, reintroducing spectrum is fundamentally reintroducing one of the anchors in the plant community in these second thicket ecosystems. And then, our woody canopy species. This, for me, was, I was like so interested in this because here in intact thicket, all our trees are just, they're like, they don't care. They're just, they're just there. And then that in moderately degraded, it's the same. In severely degraded, it's the same. So like maybe that is part of how these trees are able to persist in severely degraded landscapes. As, as the system falls apart, they're like, well, we're just doing our own thing anyway. Um, and that, I, I don't know what it is, you know, like, is it, competition for light? Or is it just that we have too many herbivores that go into the canopy of the trees and just clear everything underneath? So you get there, you put a pollen down, there's nothing under the canopy because there's like an impala or something that was there. And then Guria Robusta. Like in, so I don't think it's gonna be like a universal thing, but in the system I was working in, 
Gruyere is really quite a, an abundant species. And it came out to be like quite an important, like quite a, a, a lock in the, um, the plant net, the association network. And in the severely degraded thicket, it was almost fulfilling the role that Speckbone was doing. And um, a couple of, yeah. Yesterday we saw it at the Thicket White Plot. Speckbone and Gruyere aren't competing, they're like doing super well together. And Gruyere is following the same clonal reproductive strategy as, as Speckbone. Puts a branch down and it roots and it forms a new Gruyere. Um, so I found that really interesting that these like laterally spreading clonal lower growth form species are quite well embedded in the, the plant networks. And then at the plant functional type or growth form level, it, ca it came out again. Okay, spec boom, you know, super important, super important, disappears. Woody trees, they're just like loosely attached. They're there, but they're not particularly fundamental in, in, in the co-occurrence network. But then the woody shrubs are, seems to be really important. So it's like this matrix community of speck boom and woody shrubs, and then the trees are almost like doing a very different kind of community process. So does this confirm our ideas about like the community structure and thicket? Does it give us insights into the, the community assembly processes of like the general idea is that we have this matrix that creates like a buffer and like a microclimate for woody species to then establish. And without that, that community matrix, we don't have the processes to bring the trees out. But then the trees seem to be pushing out the community once they're there. It might be through competition or herbivory, but even if it is herbivory, there's still a little, even, in, even if it's not like an overstocked or highly degraded space with like a lot of animals, the animals are still going to concentrate on the trees because it's pretty much the only place they're going to get good shade. And how can we apply this information to restoration is now we know, like, okay, shrubs, great friends, speck boom and shrubs, besties, speck boom and trees, not so much. So don't go and plant under all your papiers and scotias. It may seem like a great space. It's going to have shade, it's going to have more leaflets, it's going to be the best thing. But I don't know. I think um, there might actually be something more to, to look at there. Because if you plant and then an animal comes, kills all the plants, it sucks. If the plants don't grow well, you don't make your carbon money. So I think um, it's almost like a, a point forward to start looking at how these plants are interacting to like better inform how we manage these landscapes and restore them. So I think that was, yeah, more data, fancy masses, Alistair, check these things, test some ideas, maybe even write a paper. Sounds good. <laughs>